Okay, Joe, we uh, we did this project. Yeah. And I I thought that your title for it was absolutely brilliant, whistleblower. Um, let's talk about it, though. I mean, um, I made some choices for you of musicians that I thought would really work, and you brought musicians that you had uh, wanted to include and to um, you thought would, would best present what it is that you wanted to present. Uh, let's talk about it. So the funniest moment, one of them, there were many funny moments in the session, but one of the funny, funniest moments was uh, at the very beginning, one of the people got lost on the way to the session, <laughs> Evelyn, uh, Evelyn Simpson, whose, whose name is actually Evelyn Simpson Currenton. I can talk about that later. Evelyn Simpson Currenton got lost on the way up and she came in on that morning late and you and I were talking and you're shaking your head going, my people are here. <laughs> I got my people. I can't talk about your people. So we set up this my people, your people uh, thing. Right, but right. that you remember? But, uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, it worked out. I thought it worked out beautifully. People got along well and played and uh, it was amazing for me to play with someone like Tom Guarna or or Anthony Wanzi. Tom Guarna played guitar. He played guitar or Anthony Wanzi who played piano, uh, and, piano and, and keyboards. Keys. And then you introduced me to Michael Wooten. To Michael Wooten. Who, Michael Wooten who's a brilliant he, young. Amazing. Amazing from Philadelphia. Yeah. Amazing yeah. player. And um, uh, the violinist? The violinist Diane Monroe is an old friend of mine. I mean right. we've been friends since uh, uh, high school uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, so so I, I had asked Diane to come play and I had always wanted to play with Evelyn uh, who I met many many years ago that's a whole story that we could tell but uh, Evelyn and Diane and I used to play together and Evelyn in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia. and yeah. Evelyn Evelyn sings uh, beautifully and uh, plays keyboards and I think increasingly in her life got more and more into the church mm -hmm. and so she she moved away from from Philly and um, spends a lot of time organizing choirs and writing music and arranging music uh, but uh, I was very glad that she could uh, she could participate in this and was willing to I, and you, know. you had your young nephew yeah my nephew Daniel Winchell uh, played bass He's actually one of my students now. Yeah. 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 Um, and he's a good kid. Yeah. He's got great potential, too. Uh, it was great. And uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, Chris Williams. Chris Williams, great singer, great person. And Chevy. And Chevy Chavis, who, who was amazing because... Chevy came in because another singer who you and Chris had worked with was unable to make it out of right. out of New York because of some traffic, some crazy traffic problem. We called Chevy based on the recommendation of the guy who owned the studio. Right. And she came in and, if you'll excuse me, just sang her ass off. I mean, well, she I had heard her. I had never heard her. I, yeah. I had gone to a wedding and she had a band at the wedding that was the best wedding band I've ever heard in my life. And they just totally nailed it. And I was really impressed with her singing. And so when uh, the other singer couldn't make it, I thought about her and said, you know, maybe we should give her a call and bam. I mean, she came over, she really didn't have time to prepare. She picked up her daughter from school and her daughter came and sat in the studio. Yeah. And she looked at the lyrics and listened to the tunes and, and really, really <clears throat> sang. Let's talk about the music. Um, there were some pieces that, one of the pieces that was kind of interesting is um, Handel's Messiah. Yeah, so come on to him. This is something I'd wanted to play with Evelyn for a long time. She's been harmonizing and reharmonizing this thing for years. And uh, I had thought about uh, playing it with her and, and doing it on the recording because 
it's originally from the Baroque period when, when the recorder was being right, used right, a lot. Right, right, and I had heard her play this at John Blake's funeral not long before. John Blake uh, was, was a violinist yes. uh, who played with McCoy Tyner and um, from Grover Washington and others from, from Philadelphia, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's also a keyboard player and, uh, and a great musician. And uh, His son is too. Oh yeah, yeah. Jonathan. Plays, plays the drums. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, John and I had known each other since I first heard him when I was in elementary school playing with a, with a group uh, in my school, came around. Um, but uh, I, I lost my, I lost my thought. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my thought. We were talking about coming ye unto him. Come ye unto him. Yeah, so Evelyn, uh, Evelyn played that, and that was a lot of fun um, uh, because of the effect it had on Anthony Wanzi, who, um, who is a great piano player who played with Wallace Roney's group and other groups and a lot of classical uh, uh, training. And he was blown away by the way she harmonized it and played chords that were simple but very hard to name because of how they were functioning. Right. And he was he was blown away by that, and it was it was fun. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that was, and and uh, Michael Wooden did a very very great uh, string arrangement. Yeah. with that, yeah. so it was great. Peace go with, listen, peace go with you, brother. Yeah, I had always loved Gil Scott Heron. Gil Scott Heron, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I know you had a connection with him. Yes, yes. And uh, and so I had suggested that, and I I like that tune because it's. Um, because of its basic message of the importance of respect and the, and the decay of the way we interact with each other. Good point. I thought a great choice for the recording was Love by George Duke. You know, um, George's first record, I think, was, uh, I think it was MPS. I forgot the actual uh, label. Uh, but he did an album that was basically a trio, but it, but he had uh, Frank Zappa play guitar on it. And I think it was called Feel, the album was called Feel. And that was a beautiful piece called Feel. But the, uh, the tune that really resonated with me was this tune, Love. And I've been, this is one of my favorite George Duke's uh, compositions. And I thought it worked, it would work well with you doing it and we would recapture you know, kind of like the Gene Con or the Farrah Saunders vibe back in the day, which we both uh, loved. And I thought that it turned out really well. I mean, with, with uh, Chris and um, Evelyn singing yeah. also. Yeah, I was uh, that that was a lot of fun to play and so many great performances on there. Tom Guarna played great on yeah. that. And uh I I loved the way you played, but it was a real learning experience to watch how this came together in the studio because we there's a lot of layering of things on But it, it was it was point uh, poignant because we had just recently lost George. Yes, and we uh, started to record it. You were you were a, a close friend of his, right? Well, yeah, somewhat. Um, you know, George was an excellent musician. I mean, there wasn't any type of music that he couldn't represent well. He played everything well, and you know, we became friends. And uh, you know, to be able to give a somewhat of a, a nod or a tribute to George uh, was uh, kind of special and thank you for agreeing to do that. It was, it was my pleasure, it was, it was an honor and I, I liked the way it turned out. Well, all I do. All I do was, uh, was you. you. You had suggested this tune and I was amazed. You said you had an idea for a tune. It was a Stevie Wonder tune I loved all I do, but you had a completely different thing on it uh, coming from the way you played the the drums. I'm here. I am trying to, <laughs> and uh, 
um, we, uh, we got it together, and I struggled with how to play that until we, we got Wooten to play, to bring in the piano, and then all of a sudden I could hear it, and, uh, and it, yeah. Yeah, you know, to me, Stevie is one of the great composers of the 20th century, and I think he's a closet jazz musician. All of his music can be can go both ways, and so I just had a an idea about it, <clears throat> and um, I thought it went well uh, with uh, the instrumentation of it. That was one of the main things about doing your project is to find an instrumentation that I thought would work and would be able to translate to. Uh, a contemporary sound because the recorder is somewhat like a flute but it's not a flute right you know um, that's also why I thought uh, the Black Angel would work yeah uh, Kenny Barron's tune yeah that Freddie Hubbard had recorded yeah I, I, I mean there were a couple things as a producer that you did for the recorder that I had never been able to work out the context is very important and in my ears, it was always like play with the drums and, and, and you know, but, but in reality, you have to take into account the, um, the sound of the instrument and its yeah. limitations and, and present it in a way where it can speak. And I think we found something here and uh, that tune, The Black Angel, and you suggested doing Trouble in Mind, the, the Youssef Latif, from, <coughs> because Youssef Latif had had done this with the oboe, oboe yeah. and uh, and so it made sense to and you killed to link it, with that. Oh. It's great. Yeah. It's great. I mean, you sounded great on all of the uh, the tracks on the record. So um, I think you should be proud of what it is that you did, and you represented the instrument in a way that is that has not been represented. Thank you, Lenny. I, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 